Hey Math 43ers, I had a question coming out of the Chapter 12 homework, number 73, and here we are looking at data from these 13 different colonies of sparrowhawks. We're looking at the percent of the returning sparrowhawks in relation to the percent of the new sparrowhawks. And so as we look at our two numerical variables, part A says go ahead and enter your data into your lists and make a scatter plot. So I actually went ahead, oh, let me clear this out. I went ahead and put my data in my lists. You can see them in L1 and L2. I would always recommend, and let me head over to these two lists, that you make sure you have the same number of data values in L1 as L2. If you don't, it'll pop out a dimension error. So from there, I want to set up my scatter plot. And if I go into my stat plots, you can see I have one on, two off. It is a scatter plot type. And I have L1 against L2, so I'm going to hit zoom 9 and take a look at that scatter plot. And there it is. So that's that's my answer for part A. Just looking at it, I can see I have a negative relationship in that the percent of new sparrowhawks decreases as the percent of returning sparrowhawks increases. And then it says use your calculator's regression function to find the equation of the LSRL and add this to your scatter plot. So we have our main calculator command in chapter 12. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. We're going to do stat. We're going to go over to calc, option 8, and then we're going to feed it L1 and L2. And then so that we add that, that regression equation to our scatter plot, we want to drop it into Y1. So let's go ahead and hit L1, comma, L2. We'll add another comma. And then to get to our Y variables, we start with vars. We go to the right to Y vars, and then enter, enter, enter. We'll do it. And let me go ahead and run that. And there you can see my y-intercept, my slope, r squared, r. But more importantly, just to finish out part B, if I hit zoom 9 again, you're going to see that LSRL coming through my scatter plot. And if we just go into y equals, right, you can see that, that linear model, that LSRL was dropped into y1. And I have that equal sign active. You can see it's got the black background. And I've got the scatter plot active. Those are the two things that are active on my calculator right now. So it says explain in words what the slope and y-intercept of the regression line tell us. So again, if I go back here, oops, let me run regression again. It erased from my screen. My y-intercept is about 31.9. So when the percent of new sparrowhawks, excuse me, when the percent of returning sparrowhawks is about zero or is zero, the predicted percent of new sparrowhawks is about 31.9%. And then we can see our slope here that for every percent increase in returning sparrowhawks, there's a decrease of about 0.3% for new sparrowhawks. But let's go ahead and use our templates for that. So I'm going to click over to the homework solutions. And just as we start to go through this, to back this up, you can see my scatter plot. I did it on my Mac computer. You don't have to. Here, here's the the scatter plot on our calculator. I grabbed a screenshot of that. And you can see the LSRL coming through there. I've got percent return labeled on the x-axis and percent new labeled on the y-axis. And then you see me writing my the equation of my LSRL in part B. But again, I, I have that predicting hat, which is something I'll be looking for. And then I have the context of the variables rather than just y and x. So over here, you can see the x and the y on the calculator output screen, but we're going to take it a step further and we're going to put percent return and percent new. We're going to put the context of our numerical variables. And then getting back around to part C, you can see I'm using that template from chapter 12. So for every one unit increase in X, the predicted average increase or decrease in Y is blank units. For this particular problem, I opted for the word decrease because the slope was negative. Right. And then I put in the context of X and Y, right? Percent increase in return, I'm sorry, returning sparrowhawks, right? And then percent of new sparrowhawks. And then I've got the units there, which are both percentages for these numerical variables. And then there's my Y intercept, right? When X is zero units, the predicted Y value is blank units. So in this case, when 0% of sparrowhawks returned to the colony, the predicted average percent, excuse me, the predicted new percent, I can use my words, the predicted percent of new hawks is about 31.934%. All right, so that's using those two templates from chapter 12.
like I mentioned before, you don't have to match the words exactly, but I am looking for the context of each variable in both interpretations. I'm looking for the units on each numerical variable in both interpretations. The word predicted should be in there because anytime, oops, excuse me, anytime we're using the LSRL, we're predicting Y values. And then for the slopes specifically, since slopes are average rate of change, that should have the word average in there. Okay, let's look at part D. How well does the regression line fit the data? So there should be three factors in that decision. And as I look at this, we want to talk about the original scatter plot, which it looked negative and linear. It wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen. And the R was strong enough, not strong actually, I'm going to take that back. It was moderate, but it was bordering on strong because our spread on the moderate range of R is from 0.5 to 0.8 or in this case, because we're on the negative side, negative 0.5 to negative 0.8. And you can see that that negative 0.75, it's much closer to the strong side on the moderate end than the weak side. So I had a moderate negative relationship. And then I went ahead and I made the residual plot. And let me go ahead and make that residual plot here. So I'm gonna change my stat plot. Instead of L1 against L2, I'm gonna go into my resids. In my resid, you hit second and stat, and then in this particular calculator on my desktop app, it's in option eight. All right, you can see it there. A lot of calculators, including the one I typically use in class, it's in option seven. So just look for wherever your resids are listed. Go ahead and make that residual plot. Now I'm gonna hit zoom nine, and you can see my resids going through there. And this little line here, that's still from the LSRL. We don't need it, so if you wanted to, you could turn it off you could go into your y equals, hover over that equal sign, hit enter, and you can see that it doesn't have the black background anymore, so it's not active. So then you get the residual plot without, without the LSRL going through it. And that's, that's what you see here, okay? So let's go back to the problem. So now we've got, oh, excuse me, let me finish this off. Since our scatter plot was moderate, since R was moderate, and since there's no discernible pattern in the residual plot, we would say the linear model is a good fit, right? It's the best we're going to do. If there was something better, it would present itself in the residual plot. All right, so then let's head in. It says, which point has the largest residual? Explain what this residual means in context. Is this point an outlier? Is it influential? All right, so let's go find our largest residual. I'm going to go back into my lists, and I'm actually going to create a residual list. So I'm going to define L3 to be my residuals. So again, I'm gonna hit second and stat. And for this particular calculator, it's in list eight. A lot of calculators, it's list seven, but it'll auto-populate. So let me just scroll through this. And I, at negative 5.8, it's one of the larger ones. That beats negative 5.1. Let me just scroll all the way down, see if anything beats negative 5.8. It's not looking like it. So my largest residual, if I ignore positives and negatives, my largest residual, let me scroll back up, is negative 5.869. So in terms of which point had the largest residual, it was 66,6. 6. All right, now, is this point an outlier? And I'll, I'll get to what this point means in context. Well, actually, let's just do that right now. So let me scroll down here, right? The largest residual was at the point 66.6, .6, and that value was negative 5.869. Since our, our residual was negative, that means we actually overestimated the percent return, excuse me, the percent of new sparrow hawks, because residuals are actual minus predicted. And if that difference is negative, it means your predicted value was larger than your actual, meaning you overestimated, right? So we overestimated the percent of new sparrow hawks by about 5.9%. All right, now to answer the rest of this question in part E, right, is that point an outlier? Well, if it's an outlier, we have to find the average residual length, double it, and see if 5.869% is larger than double that value. Now, how we find the average residual length, it's a funky little calculator command. We only use this one time. So we're going to hit stat. We're going to go over to tests. And we have to find linear regression t-test. And it's so far down that it's actually easier to scroll up. So I'm going to go here, right? And my data is in L1 and L2. I'm just going to hit calculate. So I'm going to scroll all the way down until I hit calculate, hit enter. And then there's a lot of common numbers here, right? There's my y-intercept again. 
If I scroll down a bit, there's my slope. S is the one we're looking for. That's the average residual length. And so what that means, if I just head over here real quick, that if I took a look at all these residuals, this one, this one, all of these, that the average residual length is about 3.6%, right? And this one down here, this was negative 5.87%, right? The ordered pair 66 comma 6. Now, is it an outlier is the question. Well, what we do is we take this number and we double it, right? So you can see it here. If I take 3.67% and I double it, I'm at 7.34%. So any residual that is smaller than positive 7.34, or I should say is in between negative 0.734% and positive 7.34% is not an outlier. So for example, this residual, negative 4.4, it's in between negative 7.34 and positive 7.34, not an outlier. Negative 5.869, it's in between negative 7.34 and positive 7.34 not an outlier. And since this was our largest residual, then we, we just don't have any outliers. Right? And then taking a look, if I go back up to my scatter plot, here's that ordered pair 66 comma 6, or it's over here, 66 comma 6. And it's not influential because it's not isolated in the x direction. And that's fine. It's just a matter of recognizing it. So to answer this question, it is not an outlier and it is not influential. And then part F asks us to make a prediction for 70%, right? An ecologist wants to predict how many birds will join another colony of sparrowhawks to which 70% of the adults from the previous year have returned. What's the prediction? Well, let's head down. So if I head down here and I plug in 70%, my predicted Y value is 10.653%. And I could crunch that on my calculator if I wanted to. If I headed back here, and went back to my original scatter plot. Let me do the second L2 here. And then let me turn my LSRL back on. Oh, it looks like it is back on. I'll hit zoom nine. And let's do a little interpolation here. So I'm gonna predict a value, second trace, option one. And let's just plug in 70. And then you can see that 10.652. All right, so I hope all of that helps. Thanks so much, bye.